Now the very last thing to explore as part of your studies of technologies education is around how you're going to sustain your ongoing learning about technologies education beyond this course and beyond your initial teacher education. Now as a professional teacher you are expected as a professional to maintain ongoing learning. Indeed it's part of your registration requirements to re retain your registration that you show evidence of your ongoing professional learning. So there are a range of different um, organizations that can assist you with this. Now the first is the departments of education and your school systems. Um, your school has a requirement to conduct a certain amount of professional learning each year with you as a teacher. Um, as a beginning teacher, you should also have access to a mentor and have some additional support. Normally you'll have a reduced teaching load and there'll be some additional support provided by the school leadership um, to assist you in transitioning into teaching. But beyond that, each year there'll be what we call PD days, professional development days, which will be set in place where new initiatives, particularly retaining, pertaining to the school, will be discussed and explored. Um, and sometimes the department will also run uh, professional learning particularly through their online platform with webinars and so forth. And that will also occur in independent schools and Cath Ed and Lutheran education. And as you progress up in your career, there'll be leadership opportunities and training and development that will help prepare you to become a leader in your school and eventually potentially a deputy or a principal. So these are things that will progress through your career as you develop in your professional learning. Now, one of the mechanisms to support that are the unions, where in addition to be an advocacy process, they also provide professional learning around various issues. Some of them around being a teacher and employee relationships and all those issues, but also around other um, issues such as digital technologies and curriculum matters. Now, then there's the curriculum, um, Queensland curriculum and it's, uh, assessment Authority, QCAA, which sets out the curriculum. Now, they manage how primary schools engage with the Australian curriculum, which is done by ACARA, which is Australian Curriculum and Assessment Authority. But the Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority, well, they focus on the senior years in um, high schools, uh, working out whether or not what students will um, achieve and then get access to attending university and so forth with their ATAR ratings and all that, all of those mechanisms. They also in, are involved in the development and maintenance of curriculum all the way through. And there are opportunities that they put on around professional learning. Now at the moment that's focused mostly on secondary, but increasingly they are being involved in primary, um, particularly around concepts we explored looking at um, cognitive verbs and the new taxonomy of learning that they are encouraging to be incorporated into primary schools. So there will be some opportunities around professional learning in that space. Now, one of the most significant aspects, though, of your professional learning are where teachers have gotten together and formed professional associations. So a whole lot of beginning teachers uh, formed the Better Association, which is Beginning and Establishing Teachers Association. Now, it's designed to assist new teachers coming into the profession and support you in that means. Now, it doesn't have a registration fee, but it's mostly done through conferences and um, activities like that, where you they put on these events and Beginning and Establishing Teachers attend these events and learn more about what's happening. Now at Griffith, we also have a similar process done through our um, TAGs, which is Tertiary Education Industry Advisory Groups, where we put on special um, workshops where we bring in principals and school leaders and help you learn about various um, additional things beyond the what you learn as part of your teacher education programs. Now, each curriculum area 
also has a professional association of teachers. Now, in Queensland, we don't have a primary teachers professional association, but we do have a range of subject-specific professional associations. So, for example, there's one for design and technology uh, called DATA, Design and Technology Teacher Association of Queensland, and there's an Australian one as well. For digital technologies, there's QSITE, which is Queensland Society for Information Technology in Education. Now, each of those have a strong primary teacher component. Now, professional associations aren't just, though, what you get from them. Um, so when you join, and there is a joining fee, although there are quite heavy discounts for um, students. So for data, it's free to join as a student. For um, QSite, it's, I think it's $14 to join as a student. And then generally it's about $100 a year as a teacher to maintain membership. Now, while these organizations put on professional development events, um, workshops, conferences, um, webinars, things of that nature, it's much more about being a member and working with colleagues and learning from each other and for yourself sharing what you do and contributing to these workshops and conferences by sharing um, new ideas that you've come up with. So you might have used a new piece of technology, say a new robotics kit, um, or in design and technology, you've um, explored a new way of doing things, say with paper planes and done out a whole unit um, and activities with your, with your students around that. And there's opportunities to share that approach. So it's, it's, the whole idea of professional associations is the sharing. Um, and from that, you get to interact with teachers that have got a lot more experience than you have. And you learn from them in a much more collegial way than often occurs in schools. Though it should also occur in your school. But in schools, we're very busy and so forth. And we don't tend to have a lot of time to focus on specific learning areas. That's where the subject professional associations have their strength. Now, there's often also some international ones. Um, and if you really want to develop a specialization in an area, and in particular for digital technologies, a lot of primary teachers have specialized in digital technologies and have become specialists where they're employed just to teach digital technologies. And they then support other teachers within the school to, to teach digital technologies as a specialist teacher. So there can be opportunities and being part of a professional association and building up that credentials and that networking of skills can be very important if you want to pursue that particular opportunity. Now, beyond the formalized memberships and professional associations, there are a whole lot of ad hoc associations, particularly utilizing social media. So there are groups that have formed, um, particularly on Facebook has been a very popular one, such as the Queensland Digital Technologies Teachers or Digital Technologies ICT Teachers, um, Teachers of Digital Technologies. Uh, Queensland or QSite has an association uh, website um, um, on, on Facebook and so does Better, the Beginning Teachers. So this is another form of community participation in the online space. So a little bit different to workshops and conferences and things like that, but certainly sharing ideas and um, expressing concerns and seeking assistance are facilitated by these online groups. And there are some primary teacher associations. Um, the Queensland Primary Teachers um, Facebook group is probably the largest, uh, but there are another three or four that have smaller memberships as well that you could get involved in, including one specific to regions. So for example, there's a Gold Coast um, Teachers Association, or sorry, shouldn't call it an association, it's a Gold Coast Teacher Facebook group, um, where they share issues and opportunities, say in this particular region. So as you progress in your career, you should be looking for opportunities to network and be part of developing as a professional and exploring how your progression occurs is part of being a professional. So that's probably where you need to consider your pathways beyond 
this course in technologies education as to how you can now sustain that into the future as you become a wonderful teacher of technologies.